Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Last night, AEW and NXT. Quick look here at these shows, and we'll get your feedback today. Lance Archer, Eddie Kingston. Eddie got the win with Brass Knucks. These cheating heels. And then they beat up everybody afterwards and... It's a good match. John Moxley promo about next week. Next week's a big show. It's Beach Blast. We'll go over the card here in a moment. A lot of promotion for that and the March 7th Revolution show. Jericho and MJF beat the Varsity Blondes when Jericho did the biggest lion salt of his career and got the victory over young Brian Pillman Jr. This was a backdrop for MJF and Sammy having yet another argument. We had the announcement that at the pay-per-view, it is going to be Cody and Red Velvet against Shaq, the Shaq, and Jade Cargill. And Red Velvet cut the promo of a lifetime, hyping up this match. I don't know how good the match is going to be, but they did a good job building up this match here. Hangman Page beat Ryan Nemeth. Took him forever. I don't know why. Seems to be an occurrence regularly here on this program, which Cody even mentioned he got yelled at. For going so long with pretty Peter Avalon last week. And then afterwards, Matt Hardy is now trying to recruit the Hangman. Since the Hangman has turned down the Dark Order. And the best match on either show and the best match of the week so far. Jungle Boy beat Dax Harwood. Fantastic match. Jungle Boy beat him clean in the middle via submission. There was no screwing the Jungle Boy. There was no getting heat. They got some heat afterwards, but... It was Jungle Boy's time to win. He had a great match, and he won, and he came off as a big star. And, of course, afterwards, they did beat up the baby faces. They chopped off the horns of the Luchasaurus, so presumably he's going to get a sweet new mask coming out of this as well. Britt Baker beat Shanna. We had an MJF Sammy promo. They're still having issues. And, of course, in the main event, it was the Dark Order versus the Young Bucks and the Good Brothers. Dark Order just beat him up the entire match, but then the Bucks and the Good Brothers turned it around there at the end, and they laid out Grayson, Meltzer Driver for the pin, and they announced afterwards that next week there is going to be a Battle Royal, and the winners will be in line for a tag team title shot, but the Young Bucks are in the Battle Royal, and so if the Young Bucks win, they get to choose their opponents, and they basically told us that if they win... They are choosing the Good Brothers. The rest of the show next week, it's the Penelope and Kip wedding. Not looking good for that bachelor party, but we'll see. The Tag Team Battle Royal, Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa, Kenny and the Good Brothers versus Pac and Phoenix and Moxley, and that is the main event of next week's show. As noted, NXT was just largely a bunch of tag matches. Killian Dane and Drake Maverick lost to MSK, so they move on in the tournament. Kurt Stallion was supposed to debut, but he was beaten up backstage, and so they put it off a week, and they also gave you an interview with Kurt Stallion. So I think the idea is they actually figured out that nobody knows who Kurt Stallion is, and so they delayed it to try to tell you a little more about him. Now, what they told us about him is he likes to drive his car a lot. That was it. So hopefully they could tell us more next week before he actually gets his match against Santos Escobar. We had Dakota Kai and Raquel beating Ali and Jesse Kamea, the funniest finish I ever saw in my life. We can get into that later. Tyler Rust beat some dude, and boy, if you guys were mad about Cody and pretty Peter Avalon, this was different, but it was largely the same. Why do I have to watch this match for six minutes? Just beat this guy. They wouldn't even tell us what the guy's name was. But it went on for six minutes. And even with crowd sweetening, live fans, and people on the monitors, nobody cared about this match. Grizzled Young Vets beat Kushida and Leon Ruff to move on. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Wait, what happened here? I don't even know. Yeah, Vets won. Anyway, point is, afterwards... Kushida is getting beaten up by Austin Theory and Johnny Gargano. And who should show up but Dexter Loomis to scare Austin Theory? Everyone is petrified that it's actually going to be Dexter Loomis getting the title shot against Johnny. I don't think it is. 
I think they're setting up Dexter and Theory as well as Kushida and Gargano. That I'm fine with. Kurt Stallion gets laid out backstage, as noted. Uh, Tony Storm does a storyline. She's upset, and they basically, I mean, do I really need to go over everything that happened in this? Long story short, it appears they're either setting up a three-way with EO, Tony, and Mercedes, or they're going to do Tony versus Mercedes, and the winner gets EO. But it's a three-way feud that the angle they did here went on for like three hours. Bronson Reed beat Swerve Scott with the splash. Yes, we saw the same match three weeks ago. I don't know why we saw the same thing again, but the match was fine. And finally, the main event, Finn and O'Reilly versus Lorcan and Birch. Finn and O'Reilly won, and then Pete Dunne showed up afterwards, and we had a big brawl. And long story short, I mean, we got four baby faces, but only three heels because they got rid of Pat McAfee for inexplicable reasons. So... I guess Finn is just going to slowly work his way out of this program so that we can have Pete Dunne and his crew against Undisputed. And then I don't know what they do with Finn Balor. Maybe they're going to go right to the to the Karrion Cross match. But anyway, that was the show's. Uh, not to spoil tonight, but NXT was not the better show. AEW was a far superior show. And Mike, any thoughts on any of this? Yeah, there were some good things on NXT, but I thought that AEW was a great show. And I know this is a conversation from a different time and place, but if that show would have ended right after Dax and Jungle Boy, it would I think that was about the 80 minute point. And if you were looking at this from like the old, you know, 90 minutes is the the best time, you know, and it doesn't make any sense in this day and age to do a 90 minute wrestling show. It's not it doesn't make sense from the wrestling point of view, it certainly doesn't make sense from the network point of view in all in most cases to do this but like that was a great 90 minute memphis-esque wrestling show you had a undercard tag team on the come up face a main event tag team with chris jericho and mjf that was really good we had the eddie kingston uh lance archer fight to begin the show which was followed by a great john moxley promo which was fired followed by a great sting and darby promo the cody and i mean that Red Velvet cut a really good promo, and I thought that of all the interactions that we've had that have had to do with Jade Cargill or Shaq or any of that stuff, that was by far the best segment they've done. And this is not to demean or or throw out anything that happened at the end of the show because there was a really fun main event that happened at the end there. But I thought that first 90 minutes, there was it was great. I thought it was great. And then Britt Baker and Shayna was were out there. They did a little bit more, and then we got the main event match. It was a huge win, I thought, last night for AEW. I, I really did. I thought it was really, really good. There were some good things I thought they did on the main on NXT as well too. Swerve Scott bringing back fronts and, and bringing back his, his grill. You know, I thought he cut a good promo, even though the match, you know, like you mentioned, was a replay of something we've already seen a couple weeks ago. We saw some character development with Kurt Stallion. I think more than. The fans now knowing about Kurt Stallion, I think NXT now knows what they want to do with Kurt Stallion because he certainly came off as a heel in that interview with McKenzie, and then as he, he did? was laying there, I thought he did, and then as he was laying there going, it was Legato, they got me. There's no way Legato jumped him. They they what? showed that. The, I don't think they did. In fact, they acted as though almost like they didn't. I'll believe that when I see it because if that wasn't the case, then him overacting, saying it was Legato. They got me with that half smile on his face. Maybe William Regal or somebody, some agents need to smack him then because that came across as a heel faking that he got beaten down because maybe he doesn't want to wrestle in a match or something like that. That's kind of the feeling I got of that. I'll see what other people think, but I didn't get the impression at all, especially with the way that Regal was so fired up and Legato wasn't, that Legato were the ones who jumped him. Well, when Regal went into the locker room after he left, they were all smiling and happy. I, I, what, however, whatever you think of his acting, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Legato jumped this guy. Well, it didn't, it, it didn't come across that way. It came across more as he's, he's pulling some sort of fast one on somebody. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full length shows. Down there on the bottom right hand side of the screen, click that join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube. Over 300 at current count. 
Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.